Good morning, traders. Today is the 13th of December. What a crazy day. Look at this trend. Look at this big blowout number after CPI data. Um, and I had been warning everyone that a melt up and explosive move could happen sometime after uh, December 10th through, uh, uh, well, actually December 7th through 10th, and particularly warned of this week. Um, so now we are in a very clear uptrend. CPI data came in weaker than expected. I've been talking about how the post-COVID inflationary trends would subside into a more normal cycle. Uh, the U.S. market is still moving fairly strongly to the upside with a fairly strong economy. Uh, my custom indexes were showing strength. Uh, if this move holds up into the, this is the ES, uh, live data. If this move holds up into the 4180, 4160 area, maybe higher, um, we could see some real strength moving into the end of the year and a real type of a breakout trend. I do expect resistance right around this 4145 level. So we'll see how that plays out. Could blow right through it. Uh, let me come back over here to the daily chart. You can see how we've blown through this level. We do need to be aware of this critical high here. Let me extend this to the right. Uh, this is a pencil line, okay, so I can't extend it except by potentially drawing. I'll draw a new line here. Understand that we have a very key level, which was an apex flag level right here that's very key to our understanding of upward price activity. We have to see the markets close above this level uh, and attempt to move higher. We've cleared a number of key highs. So these little intermediate highs have been broken as we continue to leg upward. We're legging upward right now, but we're back against this level here. Once we get above this level, we can clearly state that we've broken this level, this level, and this level to the upside. And I, I think we're gonna be moving in this direction going forward. I think the uh, shift uh, leading with the lower inflationary data is going to pause the uh, Fed. It's going to cause a, uh, a type of a shift to take place. Uh, and like I said, I believe global investors are going to move back into this in a way that should be very positive. So now we come to the pencil. And if we take a look at where we're at, remember I highlighted we got to get above this level and this level. The reality is my opinion is I think we're going to see a move kind of like this into January, move into this area and attempt to kind of struggle back above this four, uh, 4,600 level, uh, potentially by, you know, March, April, May. It's not going to be a straight up move. This is more of a, uh, a battle, let's say, uh, kind of like a 2003, 4, 5 area where we've had our pullback. Think of this as the speculative bubble burst uh, after COVID, uh, which is similar to the 2000, 2001 market collapse. We've had our bubble burst. We've had a, a deflationary uh, trend take place. Uh, we're looking for some revaluation. We're looking for the global markets to continue to weaken uh, and settle. Meanwhile, the US market and US dollar may continue with some strength, may attempt to revert back up here at 44, 45, 4,600 uh, before potentially finding some resistance. Uh, and that could be in the next two or three months. Now, this move is going to have its volatility, ladies and gentlemen. So understand that, you know, I've kind of drawn these yellow lines here, and this is kind of where we could end up ranging going forward, but it does look like we are decidedly moving higher above this downward sloping blue channel, which has been here. This has been kind of our, uh, extend to the right. This has kind of been our, uh, our consolidation range moving lower. We are now firmly above this level uh, and we are likely to see some real solid upward trending. Now, we come over here to the uh, trading view chart. This is my one hour chart. You can see we've broken through this. I use this to help uh, and, and I'm going to be including this in a uh, structured format for intraday traders. I have highlighted these inflection points. So these blue lines indicate a change in trend is likely to take place. These are Fibonacci time cycles. 
So you can see that we're, we start a cycle here with the black lines, we extend them out with the orange lines or gold lines, and then when we get to these blue areas and red areas, we're talking about a, a critical change in cycle. So now you can see here we have, based on the last cycle patterns, we have gone through the rotation, gone through the consolidation. We had resistance at this area. Uh, this is the ES again at 4015. We had resistance here at uh, 4055, 4066. We had support down here at 3961. Uh, and we had further support down here at 3915, roughly. This was the critical zone right in here, this red and green area that I called the critical zone yesterday. So call it 3990 to 3995. Below this level, we would be looking hypothetically at shorts. Above this level, we're looking hypothetically only longs. We've had a massive breakout blown through all of our resistance channels. And again, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the potential of attempting to move much higher. So now if I move to a four hour chart, and try to take a look at where we're at in the cycle. Uh, we are uh, up into these levels. We have come up to, look at this, oh my gosh, we've come right up above this level here, which is September. And uh, let me see if I can squeeze this down a little bit. Yeah, we're we're um, looking very strong. We're up above these levels here. We've up up above this previous high level here. We're starting to target these levels back over here, which uh, real quickly would put us in this level, uh, possibly a little higher, and potentially this level. And breaking out above these levels here, ladies and gentlemen, would be huge. Uh, this would be a big rally phase for the market. Remember, there's a lot of traders that are short. There are a lot of people that had banked on a broader Fed move, uh, stronger inflation. I mean, I call them the doomsayers, but the reality is, is there were a lot of people that believed that the market could not uh, and would not recover off of this, that it was headed to 3,200. Uh, and today you're going to find a lot of short covering. You're going to find a lot of traders moving away from this. Now, I do believe I will show you this um, possibly here. Yeah, okay, I don't have a uh, zigzag. We'll turn this off. We'll go to weekly. And what I want to point out is this 2018 type of time frame. So we had this rotation in 2018. And you can see how we had rallied up, reached the 2018 peak, come back down, stalled in this low area consolidated a recovery rally, then stalled back out into December, and then moved into this reflation trade here that was rather substantial. Okay, now, what I wanted to point out was that I think we could have a late December bottom base setting up back over here in the sense that we have come down, we've seen this uh, move to the downside, we've seen this deflationary trend, we've seen this October low, we could come in here, we could have this wash down, we could have a big rotational reflationary trade cycle here, moving back up into some sort of a reflation trade, possibly getting to new all-time highs in 2023, second half maybe of 2023. Kind of similar to what happened right over here in the sense that once we had this deep deflationary cycle off of a Fed move, uh, we had this reflationary trade before COVID. Then we had the big speculative phase that took off. Uh, and really, if you take a look at from a standpoint of kind of a standard deviation channel, which I'll try to draw across these midpoint levels, where we're at now with this standard deviation channel uh, is if we were to take and clone this, move this off of peaks, clone it again, try to move it equal distance away, and clone it again, and try to again move it roughly an equal distance away. A lot of times you're going to find that the key support levels that are 
prevalent from here, the 2008-2009 levels, uh, are going to play important roles moving forward. So hypothetically, ladies and gentlemen, we could be looking at 45, 4,600 on the S&P um, going into June, July, August uh, of this 2023 uh, next year um, fairly quickly and then attempt to move to all-time highs. Now, I, I do love using this, and I've highlighted this before. It might be a little tough to see across here, but so let's come in here. Let's highlight this, extend the bar to the right, give it a nice color. And there's our bottom. That's what I was trying to show you. This high price appreciation cycle, this reflation trade cycle here, initiated a fairly standard and you can see how this standard deviation line is almost exactly the same as this light green line and what i'm trying to point out again is that we reached a critical base recently and i've highlighted this in many videos right across here where we have a critical base setting up uh, and this critical base is very very important to understand that this goes all the way back to the early cycles of the 2008-2009 base. We've got a very solid bottom down in this area off of this critical support area. Uh, we have seen a shift in tra trading and cash flow. We're seeing markets move in. I think it's partially because um, global traders are fearful of the crypto Bitcoin collapse and fearful of what may happen in 2023 related to weaker foreign markets, at-risk foreign markets uh, and weaker economies. So we have a real scenario here where a melt up in the U.S. market, if the U.S. economy continues to stay fairly strong, is highly likely. So be aware. We've broken the trends. We're moving higher. The CPI data has got the uh, S&P up almost 3% this morning and, and the NASDAQ up almost 4%. We could see this carry into January, February, March very easily of 2023. Uh, and the downside risk is dissipating. We don't do not, well, at this point, I would say downside risks, uh, unless there's some major catalyst, are going to be very, very weak. So you're going to see a lot of shifting of trends and expectations of Q4 and Q1 data over the next four or five months moving into the positive side with a melt-up trend likely establishing as the bias for upside activity. All right, guys, follow my research. 2023 is going to be a great year, okay? We are really uh, setting up for an incredible move. And if you, uh, if you follow the doomsayers, if you're married to that downside position, uh, just got burned with your put options uh, or your short positions, maybe it's time you think about something differently. Maybe you start thinking and looking towards better research and better interpretation. Okay, guys, follow me. I'm here for you. I'm trying to help you out, and I hope you enjoy these videos.